All right, let's look at the lower respiratory tract. And we have a few things to point out on this model. So the first thing we'll start out with are um, features of the larynx, which will be this area right here. And then we will have features of the trachea, which is this area right here. The first thing I'd like to point out is remember that we always want to orientate, all right? So um, that means what side am I looking at? Front, back, left, right, all that good stuff. Because if you just kind of have it, you know, I don't know, out like that, you have no idea what we're looking at. You can memorize what the structures are, but remember the whole point of this is that we learn where these are in our bodies. So when we are holding it like this, we are looking at the anterior side. This is the right, this is the left. Now, recall that we're missing some stuff on this side. That's just the make of this model. All of this stuff is also over here. We've just removed things so that we can talk about specific structures. This is the posterior side, so same thing. Um, there are certain structures that we can see better on this side uh, than we can on the anterior side. All right, let's get started with some major parts. This right here is the hyoid bone. You may recall this bone from AMP1. It's really cool because it's the only bone that doesn't articulate with any other bone in the body. And also, um, you can see a lot of stuff attaches to it. Um, not pictured here is our tongue, and our tongue attaches to part of it at least. Um, and so this is a really important structure with this whole setup here. Then right here we have the thyroid cartilage. Now the thyroid cartilage is interesting. Um, you, you've probably seen this before and you just didn't realize it. So it's named as such because we have the thyroid gland right here. But also this part right here, so remember this is anterior, this is posterior. So this part right here is called the anterior laryngeal eminence, and it has a nickname. Some people may know this as the Adam's apple. So why is it called the Adam's apple? Well, it's because in that wonderful, glorious time called puberty, little boys and girls are getting dumped with those sex hormones. And this tissue right here is very receptive to testosterone. And so boys tend to have a more prominent or larger anterior laryngeal eminence because of testosterone. Um, now remember, girls, we have testosterone as well, just not in as large quantities as males do. Um, the other thing is there is uh, an angle, it's called the laryngeal inlet, and in uh, men, it tends to be a sharper angle than it is in women, and so it kind of comes outwards a little bit more. So if you've ever seen this kind of like little bump in a man's neck, that's actually what you're looking at there, the thyroid cartilage. Then right here, we're gonna move inferiorly. Um, we have the cricoid cartilage. So once we have these three main parts, hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, and cricoid cartilage, um, I think it's easier to then name the membranes we have here. So the membranes are going to be basically compound words that are made up of the other structures that surround it. So this one right here, which is in between the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage, is called the thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid membrane, that's this one right here. Then we have another one that's this one right here. Let me kind of bring it in a little bit closer. This smaller one is called the cricothyroid membrane, okay? Or cricothyroid ligament is another way you would you might see that. So this one, this one right here is going to be a combination of these two names. So my personal opinion is that if you learn these three major parts first, the membranes will come a lot easier. So let's talk about some emergency airways that can be established. If for some reason a patient cannot be intubated or have an endotracheal tube um, inserted into their body, there are a couple other ways that patients can still uh, receive air. One way is by making an incision right here through the cricothyroid membrane or ligament. 
and that is called a cricothyrotomy. And essentially what can happen is that the incision can be made in this area and a tube can be placed in. And so you can see that's a direct connection to the trachea and therefore the lungs. Another procedure is called a tracheostomy and that happens a little bit more inferiorly or lower. And that is when the healthcare provider will make an, inc an incision in the trachea and again, put in a tube and a little covering and then you have direct access to the lungs. So for some reason, there's some facial trauma or there is swelling, you can't get a tube through the mouth or the nose, those are two other options. So this portion right here is called the larynx, which is commonly referred to as the voice box. And the reason why it's called the voice box is because it will contain the vocal fold. So let's take a closer look at those. Okay, so here what I've done is I've taken it and we are looking down the windpipe or this tube. So here, this is the epiglottis. And as you look down here, you can see that we have the true vocal cords, okay, or the vocal folds right there. And then this opening, which is called the rima glottitis. So together, these vocal co cords, excuse me, and this opening is called the glottis. Okay, so that's the opening there. It makes sense that this is called the glottis and that this is the epiglottis because what does epi mean? It means higher up. So we would expect to find the epiglottis above the glottis. Now, the epiglottis is a really important structure and um, I recommend that you go watch my um, cat dissection tour on the respiratory system because I show you the clinical significance of this tissue right here. Basically, the epiglottis is going to be this flap that covers the opening to the windpipe or the trachea, the airway right here, when we are swallowing. So the esophagus, that tube is going to lie posterior to the trachea, it'll be right here. So anytime we're swallowing or eating something, the epiglottis can basically move and help keep uh, food or drinks from going down the windpipe. Let's move on now to the trachea. And as you have seen, if you watch my other videos, I talk about this in the organ systems video, as well as the dissection tour on our feline specimen, we know that this is the trachea very quickly by these little rings here. These are called tracheal cartilage rings or cartilaginous rings, and they are in fact made out of cartilage. Um, whenever you are looking at models or images in a textbook, many uh, resources will use this light blue color to indicate cartilage, so that might help you there. In between each ring, is going to be um, basically a little piece of tissue. It's elastic connective tissue. They kind of form little sheets and those are called annular ligaments. And so those will kind of go from here to here, okay? The other thing we have is the trachealis muscle. Now the trachealis muscle is going to be more visible on the posterior side. You'll notice that these rings are kind of C-shaped, right? So just like this, C-shaped. So we're not missing anything back here. It actually looks like this. And the reason why we have this portion open on the poster side, remember, form follows function. There's almost always a reason to, as to why things look the way they do, which is really fascinating. Remember, we have the esophagus right here that lies right up against it. So let's think, first of all, why do we want to have cartilage in the so-called windpipe? Well, it's to keep the airway patent or open. So it's a really important function. We don't want our airway to become closed. That's really bad news. And so why would we not have cartilage on the backside? Well, we need to think about what's there. 
which is the esophagus. Now remember that the esophagus is a much thinner, flimsy, flexible tube. It's the passageway for food and drink. And so we want that tube to be more malleable to kind of accommodate a different size of bolus, right? And so the fact that we have this softer trachealis muscle here, and there's some connective tissue there as well, but it's much softer than it is over here, that allows the esophagus to be able to distend and allow for that nice smooth passageway of food. So form follows function. We wanna get away from just kind of memorizing these things and thinking more critically about them. Well, that wraps up the lower respiratory tract. I hope this video helped you understand the basic anatomical parts of the larynx and the trachea. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.